Hello and welcome to Eastern Roman History. Ruling from 711 to 713, Philippicus Bardanes, having defeated Justinian II near Chalcedon, executed the emperor and murdered Justinian's son Tiberius in November 711. He immediately wanted to re-establish monothelitism. In 712, Philippicus deposed the patriarch Cyrus who defended the Sixth Ecumenical Council, which Constantine IV had called condemning monothelitism as a heresy. Cyrus was replaced by the Patriarch John. Philippicus then anathematized the Sixth Council, thus re-establishing monothelitism. The Orthodox clergy reluctantly accepted this as the empire needed unity in a time of anarchy. Branding the emperor a heretic would hardly help matters. And with Philippicus's clear lack of clemency for the helpless, resistance would likely lead to their own deaths. Later that year, Messalama completed the conquest of all Cilicia and all Roman land east of the Euphrates. Philippicus expelled Armenian refugees from the empire where they settled in the region of Melitines. The Anti-Taurus Mountains became the new frontier of the empire of the collapse of the Taurus to Arab control. The Arabs penetrated into Anatolia, sacking Amasia and Misthia, remaining in the latter for winter. Their raids reached as far as Gangra. Meanwhile, the Bulgars raided into Thrace and came within sight of Constantinople. With Justinian II dead, their alliance with the Roman Empire had now ceased to be. In 713, the Arabs captured Pisidian Antioch. The Bulgars launched another raid and a riot in Rome over the anathematization of the Sixth Ecumenical Council saw Philippicus's officials expelled from the Eternal City, much like Justinian II's were when he tried to enforce the Quinisex Council in Rome. In May, Philippicus celebrated the birthday of Constantinople, perhaps the one success of his reign. Philippicus's disastrous reign could no longer continue. Count George Burathus of the Opsician Strategia, who had led the Fematic troops to ward off the Bulgars in Thrace, sent his officers to the capital on the eve of Pentecost in June. They seized Philippicus while he napped and blinded him. This mutilation was considered far more serious than the loss of a nose or slitting of a tongue. This was likely due to the fact that Justinian II, despite having both his nose and tongue slit, he was able to return to power and hold it for several years because he was the legitimate emperor. Evidently, these mutilations were not enough to permanently bar a man from the throne. However, there was not to be an Emperor George. When Count George's loyalists announced the news of the deposition of Philippicus to the mob at the Hagia Sophia, the people clamoured for the head of the Imperial Chancery, the proto secretus Artemius to become emperor. The emperor Artemius exiled Philippicus Bardanes to a monastery and by 714 Philippicus was dead. Ruthless in his seizure of power and completely lax when he held the reins of it, Philippicus Bardanes was a poor emperor who caused unnecessary upheaval with the brief revival of monothelitism and unsatisfactory response to the incredibly serious dangers hitting the Asian and European limits of the empire. His short reign can be owed to the destabilization of the empire after Justinian II's first reign, as well as his total lack of ability as a ruler. To me, he seems to have been the very worst of the emperors that held the Eastern Roman throne between Justinian II and Leo III. I have been your host, Daniel Maynard, and this has been Eastern Roman History.